Hello and welcome to today's Daily Connect, our journey through the letter of James. And today we are up to chapter 3 and we're starting at verse 13 through to the end of chapter verse 18. So I would love you to pick up your Bible and to read that passage. And as you do that, let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the way that your word speaks into our lives today. Help us to hear your voice leading us and guiding us as we seek to be like Jesus. Amen. So do please uh, press pause, read James 3 verses 13 to 18 and then restart the video. So I'm going to dive straight in because there's it's a short passage but there's a lot to get through. Uh, so James here is, is kind of following on from his discussion about the use of the tongue. In uh, the beginning of this chapter he, he starts the chapter by saying uh, few of you should think about becoming teachers and then talks about how the tongue is is such a big influence in our lives and can do such damage and of course teaching is a verbal process and here he asks the question who is wise and understanding among you and in some way he's going back to that very first verse he's going back to about teaching and of course you you'd want your teachers to be wise not just knowledgeable but wise especially within a jewish thought where all knowledge should be in some way experiential and pragmatic it should help you live out your life and wisdom is ultimately about how you live your life it's not about spouting off wise sayings it's about how you live your life and what he says here is that Wisdom is lived out. In the previous chapter, we talked there about how faith is lived out. It, you show you or you prove your faith by your good deeds. And here James, James says the same thing about wisdom. He says, let them show their wisdom by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. You can tell if someone is wise by the way they live their life. We all know people, don't we, who, who are hugely intelligent and yet seem to make one bad decision after another when it comes to how they live their life. They might know a ton of stuff about some obscure theme or idea, but just cannot cope with life at all. And wisdom is about understanding life it's understanding how people work and how life works. It's getting to grips with how to make good decisions and to move your life forward and becoming, for us, more like Jesus, but also just becoming a better human being and thriving in life. That's wisdom. It's understanding what, what steps you need to take to get to where you want to be. And so that, that is more than simply knowledge. And when James here says, who is wise and understanding among you, that Greek word for understanding has a very practical element to it. It's an understanding that comes from experience. And sometimes the wisest people are those people who've lived life somehow, who, who have not just kind of been hidden away in some scholarly ivory, ivory tower. The wisest people seem to have experienced a lot of life and learned a lot about how life works. And so we are called to demonstrate our wisdom by our life. But then in verse 14, he says, If you harbour bitter, bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth, because that kind of wisdom does not come down from heaven. Let's just look at some of those words there. If you harbour bitter envy. The Greek word for envy is also can be also translated zeal. And zeal is a positive thing in lots of um, parts of the Bible, but here it's seen as a negative thing. It's a zeal for your own purposes. Because when you kind of combine zeal and envy, it becomes competitive, doesn't it? It's about you seeing what others have or how they live and wanting to be better than that or wanting at the very least just to have what they have. And so the idea behind this word is, is something around rivalry and competition. It's about jealousy that, that moves you to act in certain ways. Uh, and that obviously 
then is uh, connected to the second part where it says, and selfish ambition in your hearts. See, if you're simply living life for yourself, how can you truly be wise? That's not what we are called to do as Christians. We are not simply called to live life for ourselves. We are called to live life firstly, primarily for God, and then also for others. But then that kind of wisdom, and it is a wisdom that uh, James has talked about, because there are different types of wisdom in this world. But that type of wisdom, James says, does not come down from heaven. See, within Jewish thought, all good wisdom is only acquired through God. That is where all wisdom comes from. And we would want to uh, echo that, wouldn't we? As as followers of Jesus, we want to recognise that We don't see the world as God sees it. We don't fully understand the world. There's so much of this world that we just don't understand. That's a line out of a prayer I use within a funeral service. There's so much of this world we don't understand. So how can we truly know what wisdom is? We need to receive it from God. But where does that other type of wisdom come from? James says it's either earthly or it's unspiritual, or it's even demonic. That kind of wisdom that is simply seeking your own desires, your own needs, your own um, ambitions, that kind of wisdom comes from something completely other than God. And we need to recognise that. We need to recognise where our own desires are coming up from. And we might think they're good, and we might think that we want to follow them. But wisdom that comes down from heaven would always want to seek the good of others and seek primarily the kingdom of God. But then in verse 17, uh, James then gets into uh, what does godly wisdom look like? And he's very almost prescriptive here. Let me just read what he says. But the wisdom that comes from heaven, the wisdom that comes from God, is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Let me just look at those words for a moment. Uh, first of all, wisdom like that is pure. In other words, it has the right motives. And our motives should always be seeking the kingdom of God first above all things. Looking towards the good of others, even at our own expense. That is pure motives. If we are simply seeking our own ends, that is impure. Uh, Then he says it's peace-loving. All peace is about good relationships. It's not about the absence, absence of conflict. It's about good relationships. And so real heavenly wisdom, godly wisdom, seeks to develop good relationships with all people. It's considerate. And the Greek word there is quite a hard word to translate. It's, it's a word that kind of says uh, it's, someone is able to step in where the law ends. So we've all known issues where perhaps the law seems to be a bit of an ass, as, as the phrase goes. That this, even with the best of intentions, sometimes law, and I'm talking about civil law here, law doesn't always answer the questions that we we ask. It doesn't always bring about justice. And so the Greek word behind that word considerate is about being able to see and be flexible enough to work beyond where the law ends to ensure that justice happens. And it's a it's a kind of very deep word full of meaning that is both full of meaning of both Jewish and also uh, ancient Greek thought. And then uh, James says it's submissive. And again, the Greek word there can be is a little bit difficult. It has two potential meanings, and I think the NIV uses the wrong one, if, in my humble opinion. Uh, so one word is that it means ready to obey, i.e. submissive. But the other idea behind the Greek word is that it is ready to learn. In other words, that the person is not stubborn enough to hold on to their opinion, no matter what. They they are open and flexible in their thinking. They want to learn and develop their thinking. And to me, that is a better understanding what wisdom is. And so 
the ESV, the English Standard Version, uh, that translates the word as open to reason. And I think that fits better in this passage, that if you are truly wise, you know you don't know everything. You are open to reason. The next word he uses, or words actually in this case, is uh, full of mercy and good fruit. In other words, someone who is wise is compassionate in both thought and deed. And again, for James, those two things go together. You cannot think something and then live, not live it out. It is then, he says, impartial. In other words, it is able to take a step back and not be divided of heart, which is a kind of a bigger understanding of the Greek word there, that, that you're able to step back and look at the whole picture of something and not be influenced. Uh, and then sincere, in other words, without hypocrisy, without deception. That is wisdom. And then in verse 18, he describes effectively that wisdom leads to peace. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. In Old Testament, uh, certainly in the book of Proverbs, you'll find a real connection between wisdom and peace. Remember, peace is about good relationships, not simply an absence of conflict. And so Proverbs 3.17 says this, her ways, and in Proverbs, it quite often used a feminine uh, pronoun to describe wisdom. Wisdom's ways are pleasant and all her paths are peace. Anyone who seeks wisdom will also bring peace because they are living a life that others recognise as having something different about them, that they are able to, to see what it takes to move people forward, to bring them closer together, to bring unity, to bring love, to bring understanding. Wisdom is something that binds people together and not ever tears them apart. That's a challenge for all of us, isn't it? How we live our lives. Are we truly people who are wise? I want to pray over you now, and I want to pray those things that James just described about wisdom, and I want to pray them for you and for me. We all need it, don't we? So let's pray together. Lord, we want to thank you for this passage. We want to thank you, Lord, for the way that it challenges us and for the way that it inspires us. And Lord, I want to pray now that we may all learn how we may be wise, that we may have a wisdom that is pure, a wisdom that is peace-loving, a wisdom that is considerate, a wisdom that is submissive, a wisdom that is full of mercy and good fruit, a wisdom that is impartial, and a wisdom that is sincere. We pray, Lord, for that kind of wisdom. Amen. So do please join us uh, on Monday, and we will continue in our last week uh, in our journey through James. So we'll see you then. Goodbye.